Hey guys, this is me answering a beginner's question about HTML5 for total noobs. So if you're one of my more advanced students, this is not going to be for you. So let's just jump into it. I'll read the question and I'll get into the, the meat of the answer. So uh, hi Steph, what is the difference between strong versus bold tags? and between emphasis, EM tags, versus italic tags. To me, they look the same on the web page. What is the purpose of distinguishing between the two? I'm gonna get into the nerd deep dive in about two seconds, but let me just give you the, the short version for those busy nerds out there. The difference is just semantic now. Um, we'll get into what semantic means in a few minutes. You can use either or today. It doesn't make a difference. Don't worry about it. So why do you have these two sets of tags that uh, pretty much look the same on the web page? There's a historical story behind this. And if you're into this stuff, it's not so boring. So let me just jump into it. When HTML was first invented, there was no CSS. So they needed tags set of HTML tags to allow web page builders to add some styling to the page, to add italics to a page, to add, make certain text bold, et cetera, et cetera, to insert images. So the early browser makers, the nerds in the, in the power positions created a set of tags that were uh, display tags. They allowed you to change the look of things on the pages. Later on in the history of HTML, the nerds became a little bit more connaissant, a little bit more sophisticated. And so they decided that instead of using HTML to change the way the page looks, they should use CSS instead. So they said HTML tags should be semantic. What does that mean? HTML tags should describe the content of the page. The HTML tag should give you meaning to the page. So an example of that, a very common example, is the paragraph tag. The paragraph tag gives you a bunch, it tells the web browser, it tells the web browser that whatever is in between these two paragraph tags, the P tag, is a paragraph of text. So the strong tag and the emphasis tag are two examples of semantic tags and they tell the web page that Whatever text is surrounded by a strong tag, that text is more important, is stronger than the text all around it. Same thing with emphasis. Now, by default, by default, the web browsers will display strong tags bold. Well, not the tags, but the text in the tags, bold. And by default, the web browsers will display any text in between the EM tags, the emphasis tags, as italic, right? And this is the default display behavior. Every single tag in, uh, in web browsers have some sort of default display behavior. They default, the web browsers default in the way they display whatever the tags are surrounding. Now, you can use H CSS rather, you can use CSS to override, to change the default way in which a web browser displays content within a tag. So you could tell the web browser to display strong text, not as bold, but as, as underlined if you wanted to. You wouldn't, it'd be kind of silly, but you could do that with CSS. So to wrap it all up, you have a history in HTML where at first they did not care about semantic meaning of tags and there was no CSS. So they came up with a set of tags to help web designers make the page look a little bit better. Later on, they said, no, 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 no. We got to have semantic only tags. So they have, they came up with semantic tags like strong and emphasis. Now, when HTML5 took over in 2012 about, what happened is that the nerds in, who created HTML5, the practical pragmatic nerds and practical pragmatic nerds eventually win the game. They said, well, yeah, we want to have semantic meanings and tags, of course, but we have millions and millions, if not tens of millions of web pages that still use a lot of these old school, these old style HTML tags like bold, like italic. 
So instead of forcing all these web designers to have to go around and change millions and millions of web pages, let's just change HTML5 to, to give semantic meaning to italic and to bold, which is very similar to strong and emphasis. I forget the specifics now, you can just look it up. Now, every single HTML tag, to be clear, has a semantic meaning. So the table tag, it's semantic meaning that whatever's in between the table tags is tabular data, tabular text, like uh, it could be, think of spreadsheet, right? It could be priceless, whatever. Anything in between the new HTML5 header tags is header text. We also have a footer text. We have also have a footer tag which tells the browser as footer. So why do you want semantic tags? Because certain types of web browsers, say web browsers for the uh, seeing impaired, they have web browsers that actually talk out the pages. So instead of seeing the page, the web browsers that talk the pages out, they'll describe the page to the blind person what's on the page. Now these type of web browsers read those HTML tags and they can derive meaning from the page based on the tags, right? They'll look for P, P tags, paragraphs. They'll say, okay, these are paragraphs of text. There's also like uh, header tags, which are basically, you know, they provide header headline tags, right? So, they, so those, are, those are the H1 through 6 tags. There's also the footer tags and the header tags, etc. So the certain types of web browsers can use these tags to better sort out the page and read out the page. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, because of HTML5, those fantastically pragmatic nerds, they said, okay, yes, we do have a, all these old school HTML tags like bold and italic, but we can still use quite a bit of them since millions and millions, if not tens of millions of web pages already have them. We can still use them and just apply semantic meaning. So to wrap it all up, for the second time, <laughs> to wrap it all up, um, you can use either or. You can use, you know, so if you want to use emphasis or italic, you can use them. You can look it up, look up the semantic meaning of italic, semantic meaning of emphasis. Um, when you get into that whole business of uh, mapping out your web pages so that they're semantically correct, you do that when you want to target very special audiences or you may have very specific web application needs that you would do that. But that's, uh, we'll leave that for another video because it's already almost eight minutes long. So there you go. A long answer for a relatively simple question, but I think you understand now a little bit more in depth about HTML5 and HTML tags. If you want to learn all this kind of stuff and a lot more, shameless plug, look at the link below. My interactive web developer course teaches much more than this. That's why I tell people all the time, I say, these courses out there that just teach you tags, but don't teach you everything around the tags, all the meaning and the, the theory and the whys and uh, the infrastructure that the tags operate within, you're not really learning. So I teach all that kind of stuff. And this is one example, semantic and meaning of tags. You gotta, you gotta understand this if you're gonna be any type of web designer or web developer, especially. All right, there you go. February 2nd, 2019. This view is uh, so much more enjoyable in the summertime, I have to admit. This is uh, Malibu Pier, the touristy place. Nice. I think after lunch, I'm going to go walk around over there. I guess I'll have to tolerate the tourists when I record this thing. <laughs>